just occurred to me as we loaded in this map, guys. I totally forgot to add Pro Cheeto to the out of game overlay. So, Pro Cheeto, if you're still here, man, I haven't forgotten about you. I just forgot to do it while we're waiting for this game to get up and running. So, without further ado, right. this is the quarterfinals of the ESL Thursday Go for StarCraft. As pointed out here in chat, and as you can see on the overlay down here below, it is 1 0 in the favor of our Protoss player. We'll see if this can get turned around. Spawning in the top left from Evil Geniuses, the purple or. The blue Terran player, Xenocider. And in the bottom right, uh, in the orange, playing for Team Alternate, it is Monty. It's like, you know, you, you've almost got that introduction perfect, and then for some reason you say a color that's not even available on the map, much less from these <laughs> players. You're like, I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> Stand up Game and over. walk away. <laughs> but okay, Xenocider, that was a... It was a close game. If we're going to be honest about it, like if Monty had warped in those three yeah. stalkers at home instead of offensively, truthfully, he could have lost that game. Yeah. It was a really clutch decision that honestly would not have been I easy won. to make for anybody. Yeah, he just uh, relied on the timing, I guess, of the Foden Overcharge. Um, we're going to have to see what, you know, if Steven Sider is going to play differently this time. And honestly, it seems like he is because. Uh oh. Monty well, mentioned before that he. Was having some internet issues, so hopefully, it yeah, gets resolved. We said it could be a very different game if Monty can't play it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Sina Sider, this game went for 12 racks, 12 gas, rather than 12 gas, 12 or 13 racks. So uh, I'd imagine this is just going to be Reaper this time and not for that quick factory. So it could just be, be normal play here from Sina Sider, just uh, get, getting that Reaper out to scout. Yeah, early the Reaper on. is. Gonna suffer from the same sort of problems on Daedalus, this habitation station, where there's only one area you can jump up with yeah. the Reaper, so it's very easy to tell where your opponent's gonna come from. Yeah. It is. Uh, but I mean, if you wanna have more than one shot of scouting the Protoss base, I mean, it's the safest way to open. And he's even doing an SCV scout as well as that Reaper. And he's put one worker off gas, so it looks like he's just gonna. Uh, be a pause here. <laughs> he's gonna pause the game. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like he's just gonna be going for that reactor when the Reaper is finished on the barracks, and then maybe expand, most likely. Uh, yeah, this is again like it's it's always good to have one Reaper. Like one Reaper is so good for scouting. One of my favorite yeah. uses actually um, was uh, Jokshi, I want to say. I'm trying, I don't know why I'm having my brain fart with this. Jokshi, though, I'm pretty sure it's Jokshi. He does this thing where he scouts with the SCV early, and he also makes the Reaper. Then he takes the SCV and hides it like around the third, goes with the Reaper oh, yeah. for a scout. And even though both units are alive, he'll still use the, the SCV to go back in for that another scout. Because you want to keep that Reaper alive as long as possible. Information yeah. is everything in TVP. More so than other matchups, I feel, too. Because, like, let's say you're Terran versus Zerg. Honestly, whatever Zerg player throws at you early on, if you've got a lot of Marines, you'll deal with it. Roaches, Banelings, Zerglings, doesn't matter. Lots of Marines will cover it. Versus Protoss, right. that's not the case at all. You have to have the right composition. Yeah. Or the right response, uh, response like turret, you know, for Dark Templars and Oracles. Oh, exactly, yeah. Bunkers for Blink. Yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, I mean, tech paths <laughs> you got to take sometimes to pull that off. So, yeah. Uh, really important indeed for the Terran to find out what's going on. You know what, I'm going to add Prochito to the uh, sub list so we wait here, so... Yep. We're on the out-of-game yep. screen for a second. Don't be picking your nose or anything gross. Gosh. <laughs> you should see the things this guy does while we're in-game and off-camera. It's disgusting. <laughs> I'm sure he's not even wearing pants, guys. I don't even think he's wearing sh a shirt. I think that's just, like, body paint. Ah, oh, damn it, Rifkin. <laughs> Sorry Give for telling me away. Little, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, Prochito, that puts you at 39. We're at 39 subs out of 50 so far this month. Nice. So thank you very much for your support, man. Oops, I forgot to put the ampersand. There we go. Good stuff. Yeah. it's. I, I think I mentioned this last time, too. It kind of sucks. Like, it's really nice to look at and see, like, yeah, 36 people subbed to us. But it's also, like, eh, about 30 probably unsubbed, though. <laughs> so it's like... No. The thing oh, that, yeah. You know what's nice? So I, I've, out of whatever amount of subs we've ever had over the course of time on Base TV, I've only received one message where someone's like, I'm unsubbing because I don't, like... What's going on? 
Oh, really? Uh, yeah, a lot of the times people probably just can't afford to sub for multiple months or they accidentally let theirs run out and they'll, ref uh, like Penguin, for okay. example, never yeah. puts his on auto renew, so he always has to keep remembering to, uh, do <laughs> stuff. But yeah, I mean, it kind of, it, it kind of, it, it's sad to see it go, but I'm really happy that we've only ever had like one person who's been disgruntled enough to voice their opinion yeah. on why they don't want to sub. So we, we gotta be doing something right. Anyways, yeah, game is back sure. in our action. It looks like, uh, maybe some router problems. Someone hacked themselves into our internet. Yes. AKA you don't have a Wi-Fi password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Probably. Uh, but yeah, uh, Monty, on the other hand, like last game, he, you know, he went for that wacky proxy. But uh, honestly, I, it felt like that was a response to his scout. Like he scouted last game, he saw the factory, and then he went for that proxy. In this game, he opened one gas again, and then he scouted that everything's normal. So he's just... going for the expansion. I'm yeah, gonna so. interrupt your actual commentary here for some BS for a second. Mm -hmm. I like Bobble Convolute in chat. It's a sick game knowledge. She can predict the pause timing based on gas count. <laughs> yeah. Damn sure it's a great master, guys. He's gonna experience yeah, these things. I, I saw it coming, yep. <laughs> it's like, well, you know. <laughs> we had about 3 minutes and 12 seconds of the game. We can expect to pause in the next 5. Tactical pause from the Protoss player, yep. Oh, the Reaper's not going to get a lot done thanks to the Mothership Corps being out. It is a little bit frustrating yep. that it's so slow, you can't quite clean up that Reaper, but Zuma <laughs> also can very easily yep. lose this if he's not paying attention. I mean, yeah, at the same time it would be frustrating for the Terran if the Mothership Corps would be fast enough to kill the Reaper every time. Yeah. Um, but, but it's kind of yeah, nice, like, Reaper... Reapers... Uh, well, that Reaper's really reworked. They're not meant to kill a ton of workers. If they can, that's always great. I always look at it as like icing on the cake type thing, but yeah, they're no yeah. longer designed to be like huge damage units. It's more just harass that you have to deal with. Yep. Uh, CSR are going for those three racks and the command setter, so yeah, just playing uh, safe, normal, not going for like a two racks into starport. It's going with the three barracks. Uh, which is the safe option if you're afraid of facing blink. Like, if you're facing blink, Ooh. you want to have those three Rexes. He just lost the Reaper and... Yeah. Oops. Sorry guys, first blood was not reloaded it seems, but... Uh, that's really <laughs> a Ford of Stargate that's going to go unscouted. I don't believe he saw it in the oh, first pass. Yeah, no, he didn't. So Xenocider, oh. who's going for Marauders, he's going for Concussive Shells. He's going for these units that are meant to deal with ground units, not yep, to deal like with air. Or something like that. Now, what, the good thing is, though, he's got the production to deal with this. For those who don't know, there's yep. a magical number. And I say magical number because it's one of those things where you can't have any less or it won't work. You need exactly six Marines. Five oh, Marines scan. perfectly microed won't cut it. What did he scan? Yep. Yeah, oh, no, no, he no, missed it. Just barely. Oh, and Gateway's going down right after the scan. Commit to this. This is kind of like oh. how White Rye used to open up, like back in the beginning of Heart of the Swarm, where you go with a couple oh. Oracles really on, but you follow up with a big Gateway follow up. Oh, really? Yeah. But man, coming across the map like this, the one thing he's got going, no pylons down yet, but Xenocider's not going to catch that probe. If he had been able to catch that probe and keep extra pylons from going down, the gateway follow-up wouldn't be that big of a threat. Now, as I was saying before, he's got the potential to make six marines at a time very easily, or at least have six per mineral line. So the Oracle really should not end this game for Xenocider. He may catch him off a little off guard and get a couple mm -hmm. SCV kills, but realistically with marines ready, he should be able to defend. But as we yeah. see, they need to be in the natural, not the main. Yeah, they're just moving down to the natural now, actually, and I mean, Sinusider has to be careful, like, uh, Monty's got so many gateways on the way, and he's, you know, he's losing, look, all these marines that walk back from being aggressive, he's lost almost every one of them. And there's the Oracle, and he uh, places two bunkers, they are going to be so important. If they're losing more marines. If they get up, yeah, he's taking the other yeah. to the top of the hill, one of the bunkers oh cancelled. He doesn't have anything left, he's got five marines versus, soon to be like a... Oh god, the Oracle. Stock. Oh my god. The bunker's, the bunker's still building though. It needs to finish. finish. It needs to finish. Ah, it finishes, but he's lost so much. I mean, Monty's gonna be able to make sentries if he wants to. Maybe not that many. Yeah, two sentries, okay. Three sellouts. You know, one more run of units with more forest fields. Xenocider has been losing, like, he lost so many units trailing back home, and he lost units to the Oracle. Like, he doesn't have that much army anymore. Let's look at the army supply. And 19 to 24. I mean, it's looking a bit scary for him. Only one bunker. That can get forest fielded off so easily. Uh, Oracles coming to the main once again. Couple Marines here, but it's not nearly enough to deal with this many Oracles. One of them really low, almost dies. Eight health remaining on it, though. And, wow. Uh, this isn't exactly game-ending damage, but this is going to take forever for Xenocider to clean up. He's got an Engineering Bay down, but no turrets available. This Oracle will not be out of energy for another 30 seconds. He lost two Marauders in the natural, trying to chase the Stalker, as you can force build it off. Oh god, Bunker. As well. Okay, oh this is the game-ending damage. I was going to say the Oracles oh. weren't, but this certainly is. Now with almost nothing remaining, he's got a lot of SCVs at the top of the ramp. He's going to have to lift up the orbital. 
This is, I mean, this is gonna be it. He lost so many units. Yeah. So he's many working. workers. I mean, Monty's he's not mining. As well as... He's not mining. Yeah. This depot's at 30 out of 30. God damn it, Blizzard. He cancels the depot that's at 30 out of 30. What? <laughs> I, I, what? Ah, I guess he needed the money that badly, but. I mean, he doesn't need his supply, I guess, but, oh, uh, well. Yeah, Monty's making sure he doesn't need that supply, that's for sure. The Force is actually working against the Zealots here, actually really nicely here in the favor of Xenocider, but as yeah. stated before, he's lost so much at this point, I'm not sure it matters. Yeah, I mean, Monty's been, even during, like, when he engaged this attack with Oracles in the main at the same time as the attack in Natural, during that time, he's already getting the Force and the Twilight, and now he's already got, you know, plus one armor halfway done, he's getting charged, even more gateways, and a Templar Archives. Like he's even got tech behind this, and the gas income, and the mineral income. It is spiraling out of control. I feel so a little I mean, bad. Kind of yeah. Well, I feel a little, not just a little bad, but like really bad for Xenocider because for Monty, he could have like a lot of people might look at that and say like, okay, he's just toying with Xenocider. He could have tactically ended the game there or something if he just all in. But the Zell is falling back. Like maybe he felt he had lost too much, and maybe he thought he had done enough damage to get massively far ahead. Yep. Oh god, still no turret. Oh god, this oracle. Oh, no. Actually, it doesn't have a lot of energy, so it's, it's going to be limited it's on skills. It's got 18 kills on this oracle. Oh my god. Yeah, 25 workers dead so far this game too, so I mean... It's a granted, master oracle. Yeah, I mean, some of these are marine kills, but that's still so many SCVs. And Xenocider... Yep. I mean, this is what I was talking about before, but like... It's one of those situations where if Monty waits too long, then maybe Xenocider gets back into this game. But Monty doesn't need to wait for much longer. He's got charge finishing up. He's got third base. He's got level 2 armor upgrades completing soon. And Xenocider barely has a natural. Yep. Yeah, this is looking really grim. I mean, it kind of fell apart for Xenocider when he went for that, like, attack to Monty's natural. And he lost the Marauder to the fourth overcharge. And then the Marines just got chased on it. Oh my god, the Medivacs. Oh... Oh dear, and if he unloads their cells waiting. Oh my god! Oh, going from bad to worst, or from yeah. worst to worst. Dark Shrine on the way, we got three bunkers, but these are probably uh, not going to complete in time. This is pretty much game here for Xenocider. Yeah. I'm really bummed out about this because I loved watching Xenocider play. I was hoping to see more out of him today, but this is just looking yeah. a little bit rough. A little bit I'm Protoss. Monty. A little <laughs> bit Monty, yeah. Monty is scary, it's just so hard. What's well, like you, know you said what he's though? Gonna do. Well, that's what you said though. We were earlier. We we're talking about like how Monty does a lot of these sort of all-in sort of builds. Yeah. We didn't exactly see him go with the classic all-ins versus Xenocider, but attacking early certainly got him ahead in a big way. And again, yeah. if it, this is something where Xenocider, he hasn't really been playing a lot of the Go for Starcraft weeklies. He's been kind of cropping up now a lot, but he probably hasn't fought a Monty enough to know that for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, you just got to be really passive, I guess, and prepare for more than one thing uh, versus Monty, uh, like. You know, Xenocider just got, you know, aggressive early on and he just wasn't ready for the Oracle. Like, he just didn't have anything at home to deal with it properly. And he just, yeah, took a lot of damage to it and the Gateway follow-up just did a lot as well. And, I mean, I guess he just should have stayed back at home with all of his units instead and put them in the Mineral Lines and then, you know, a Bunker on top of that. And he might have just, moving, but moving out like that, losing all those units, just really made it hard for him to defend the Oracle and the Gateway pressure. So I feel like that might have been the tipping point, that move out he did. Yeah. Well, one thing's for certain, the supply. <laughs> the supply yeah. this game is so hard to look at, especially as a Terran player. Yeah, three base Protoss versus two base Terran, that's not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be the other way around. And, and he's trying to drop his way back into the game. Big storms go off though. I'm not going to quite kill this, but all these humans are so low, and these medevacs, there's no way they heal all these back up. Yeah. And the cannon, put an overcharge. Yeah. This Nexus, cool if he had enough. it gets yeah. the medevac! I think there's two marines in there too, which makes this even worse, but... I mean, yeah. Xenocider is struggling to deal with like reinforcements warping in. It's not even the main army of Monty. Monty's got, oh my god, how many zealots is that? 31. <laughs> Honestly, what Xenocider uh, needs right now is mass wood mine production. He's starting it now, but he needed this a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, it's 33 zealots versus 18 marines. <laughs> yeah. It's a painful number to look at. I mean, wood mines are so good now, too. Ever since they buffed them, it yeah. doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're facing massive clumped up units like zealots, they make all yeah. the difference in the world. And salvages the bunkers once again. Uh, not sure on the choice of that, but Xenocider with some pretty good control. I'll give him that much. Like, he's keeping these units alive for these drops alive for, like, way longer than he should. Oh, God, that was so bloody when that Marauder died, but here comes the big push. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple of mines here, but... Yeah. yeah. 
Back to Stalker. Ah, oh, this kind of sucks. I was really hoping to see more on Xena Saturday today, guys, but... Yeah, just like, uh, mind game, I guess, a little bit. Wasn't ready for the Oracle. That's what happens. Oracles can do a lot of damage. If you don't see them coming. Oh, we still got some wood being made, so I'm trying to hide out behind the Marauders. Goes off on a dead Zella corpse, just some splash damaging all of Xenocentus' units, so... Wood is <laughs> even backfiring on him, this is not his day. Uh, the funnel yeah. here in the north would otherwise be a good one, but Zella is charging through their storm. Because why the hell not, if you get enough of them... <laughs> oh, that's more. Shots. Yeah, good ones, but there's still so many storms behind us. The last couple of yeah. cities dying. It's Obliteration! Ah... Uh, I mean, Xenocentus is showing a little bit there that he, like... You know, he can drop a lot and get damage done and be really, you know, multitask really well, but he just had to survive through those early stages and he just wasn't able to. But he showed potential there with those drops that he's able to do really well in the mid game, but he just died before he got there, <laughs> unfortunately for him. 